Hello and welcome my friends. Today it's a regional playoffs time. We are facing against the one and only DK and uh, yeah, we have a lot on our list for today that we have to hope that our guys can fix. The first thing, Smolder is already banned. So great, great. We are not going to lose four games in a row to the baby dragon and getting out scale. Anyway, I hope you have been doing okay. T1, hope, used the time they had to improve, to step up their game. And I mean, we have a big win rate, uh, like serious against DK currently, right? Times were different in the past, but uh, now we are winning this matchup. We also beat them in the playoffs. So this should be okay. Zix is open, by the way. We are first picking Rumble, high priority champion. And I mean, Zeus, it's doing okay, right? I think Zeus is not one of the troublemakers right now. Uh, our big eyes are obviously first on the draft, obviously, right? What's going on with Zix, Smolder, right? Do we have any priority on champions like Nasus or uh, yeah, something like that, right? And in game, um, main focus should be on how our carrier and owner performing. How is their synergy going on? Like. It was disastrous. I I mean, you didn't saw the T1 Hunger Life video because it was it was too bad. I lost my mind and uh, yeah, it was not a fun experience. Regardless, uh, this is looking interesting already, right? Rumble first pick kind of makes some sense, right? Zeus is our carry top lane guy. Uh, he can ult the wave after level six in dive uh, in uh, split map situations. And overall, sure, we give over Zix, but I mean, honestly, it's not the highest priority champion for us. It's okay, but we're clearly not like the best Zix team right now. Cocky Maokai coming over is a bit rough, but uh, I mean, they're going to ban our junglers now, which is going to be a bit cringe. But if they ban like Lilia and other AP carries, then. Uh, Actually, do we want an AP jungler with this comp? Yeah, maybe. I think uh, Sejuani would be a reasonable ban. Faker picking up Yon. We'll have to see, right? Faker's Yon is a bit AP, right? Sometimes it's really good, sometimes it's like that. Uh, he's not Zekka. It's not Zekka's Yon, I guess. Misfortune, a very strong champion in terms of damage output, but uh, I feel the meta has shifted uh, away from her favor. I think champions with like equal or higher range just destroy her and champions like Maokai, Sejuani being in the meta, even Nasus right who's banned right now, it's just not so great for an immobile uh, carry like her. But we'll have to see. We obviously have drafted for some uh, cool teamfight wombo combos. Uh, on our side we're banning obviously against like some top lane matchups. That's uh, something that we can attack. Oh they are leaving over the Lilia. What? I mean, the Sejuani ban, I think that's really good because obviously we have uh, two melee solo laners, that should be a, a no brainer. And then the Skarner, like, it's not, ca like, Canyon is not playing for us, right? Who's the biggest Skarner enjoyer? Then, uh, yeah, the owner here is a fine pick, right? Picking that away, right? So that, um, I mean, there are like multiple reasons coming for that. It works well with their comp, it's good against MF. Um, if you pick Leona away, now, well, T1 might run into a situation, okay, now we have to pick something like Rel, um, which, I mean, it's okay, it's okay, Rel is still a very strong champion, so you're not crying having to pick it, but obviously you can't pick any sort of range support when, uh, yeah, we have a carry junk. Nocturne? Okay, so, uh... What's next? What's next? Bard? Ooh! I said no range support, but Bard obviously is the one and only range support. I mean, Renata, maybe. No, not against this team. But, uh, oh, well, maybe with these uh, R4, uh, R3, R4, R5, maybe Renata actually could also be okay. But yeah, Bard obviously is uh, the, the uh, anti uh, range melee. No anti-range range support or something, right? His ult is so good at catching out people. I love what T1 have drafted here. Let's go through the matchups. They also look okay, 
right? Obviously bot lane, if you misstep, you can get blown up, but we should not expect this uh, to happen. Top lane should be fine, jungle should be okay. Honestly, not too sure how Nocturne is doing. Uh, his clear is decently good, but I don't know like how you would itemize. Okay, let's get into it. T1 fighting! Woo! Ooh. Oh, whatever. Well, we don't need that. Anyway, we have T1 carrier. He can play his own skin. Congratulations. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, so we'll have to see. I assume Ono goes for some Bruiser-esque build. That's going to be it. But overall, if we look at it, right, we have uh, aggro lanes across the board. So we'll have to see how owner can manage like farming, right? Because he needs to rush level six to be useful. And obviously, uh, as a carry jungler, he needs resources. So that's this and that. With that being the case, Lucid has many lanes he can attack. Obviously, mid lane, not really, but. It is quite nice uh, for him to attack other things. But oh, let's take a look at this. We have a lane swap going on. Uh, yeah, T1, please make some notes. I mean, we'll have to see if Zig stays in the meta. I don't think it's too unlikely that he uh, stays because uh, his nerfs just uh, decreasing the uh, damage his passive does. It's okay, but uh, yeah. I mean, owner is a bit behind on camps, but. Uh, it's clear as... Wait, what the fuck was that? Uh... Okay, uh... Yeah, Faker just like me just woke up. And that's okay. Right? Um... Yeah. Uh, he's sleepy. And so on and so on. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be alright. Obviously, Corky is pretty strong early game right now. And, uh... It, it's just going to be a classic. It is what it is. Uh... He doesn't need the flash as much, hopefully, anyway. So overall, everyone's scaling up, chilling, right? Now our uh, like stronger lanes in the side lanes, so top and bot, should come into effect with uh, generating some semblance of push, right? Zix doesn't have... Okay. Should be okay. Wait. It's not fine. I didn't pay attention to the minimap. So uh, I said... We're going to be fine in bot, we're going to have control uh, for the most part. If we don't, if Guma or we, right, carry as well, don't get comboed. But, oh, we don't get, uh, we, uh, I said we need to be, uh, I can't speak English, I can't. I absolutely can't speak English anymore. Uh, that's not good, that's not good. I, uh, whatever, man, I said we should... Be fine if we don't get comboed, we get comboed. I, yeah. So first blood given over. We're not that far behind in gold, right? Due to the situation uh, going on now in the jungle, right? Where owner's CS is going to go up, go up, go up. And obviously top lane, uh, a bit of a self counter pick for, for Kingen. Um, it's going to be a rough matchup, but he's going to outscale in the individual 1v1. He's going to be able to set up, right? Obviously. Um, we have seen it a couple of times, the Camille being uh, similar to um, to the Vi, right? Setting up for the Zix bomb. Anyway, Wham here gets attacked, feared, flashes. Uh, safe flash is, I think, a, a good way to phrase it. Equalizer to just harass him. Okay, Carrier uses Q early. I don't think they're looking for a dive, they're looking for some harass. I mean, Guma is coming. Actually, there's the old, there's the next old. And there's the Maokai old as well. There's the super bomb, whatever. But owner, yeah, lives for another second. But I don't know. Cooldowns were just thrown around. There's. It's just so weird. Why are we forcing this dive? Like. What? Like. What were we doing? Like, hello? Camille? She has E? She has R? Like, Zeus already used his ultimate earlier, right? He can't follow up on that so easily. And, like, especially, like, we, we were in the, what is it, side brush there. We saw that the Maokai, uh, the Leona were around, 
Like what are we diving a Camille for with Mao Kai Leona just next to them? Well, we have used some of our cooldowns already. Like, huh? Yeah, that was terrible. And like a carrier didn't have ult. If carrier had ult for tower, I don't know, maybe. But still, man. Okay, Faker gets the first blood tower in bot lane, so that helps him at least with his situation a bit. Uh, they're going to take the uh, next three grubbers. We're taking the dragon, so the yeah normal exchange you see there. Let's see. So please don't fuck this up again. Kingen. Okay, sidestep this. Has the flash. There's Moam as well. And there is the Maokai. But this time we have the old as well ready. We get the flash. Faker as well teleported in. Didn't even see that one. So this time T1 presses R on their target. And they communicate. So they all press R. And uh, yeah, it works out. Sure, don't look top lane. No, I'm looking away. I'm looking away. Oh yeah, this corner of my room looks so beautiful. Oh, okay. Better. Uh, yeah, that's going to sting. That's two plates gone in top lane. So uh, that's at least 300 gold. Without ults contesting. For oh my, oh my. Is that a solo bolo? Very nice. Sure, we lost the, the what is it? The, um, um, uh, Herald, exactly. That's what it's called. Okay, flashes in. Knows that Moam doesn't have any cooldowns. But the... Oh, the Q is enough. Oh, carrier. Uh, he's fine. Targeting the top lane turret. Mid lane turret also somewhat under attack, but obviously 6 is 6. They have the ult to do anything special here, but it feels a bit weird. TPs come in. Zeus TPs in under the turret. Gets ulted, gets comboed, and just dies, giving over a shutdown. Ay, ay, ay. Why TP in when you don't even have ult? Oh my. Aiming. What the hell? Man, that guy is playing uh, the Ziggs well. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, this was one of the DK uh, power points, right? Some cops are really good with the smolder, some cops are really good with the Ziggs, and then there's T1 who can't do both. Uh, sadly. I mean, our smolder is okay. We just don't want to pick it. Okay. Yeah. We are getting absolutely bamboozled, man. At least we get some tempo with using our ults like that, but it also means, bros, now we can't force fights, please, don't do... Like, I, I just said, like, please don't step up, we don't have ults right now. What is Guma doing? Gets fucking satcheled again. Oh, no, 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 they're attacking Zeus, we need that guy, at least, oh, okay. He gets the satchel over the wall. Faker will follow up. Uh, but uh, Faker also needs to follow up. Hello! What? Oh, come on! We're playing these fights so, like, unnecessarily overforced, it feels like. Like, sure, DK's comp is really good when we run into them and our comp, like, kinda runs into them. But look, just look at this fucking stupid shit. What is Guma doing? Hello? Why do you need to kite forward here? Like, what the fuck? It's the second and uh, kind of third time if you count laning phase. And here we're posturing for a fight. Hello, our ults are still off cooldown. Our ults are still off cooldown. Why are we forcing this? Sure, aiming gets a nice satchel. Sure, maybe that's not something that you count on. And here, Lucid, yeah, obviously, yeah, sure. That's just the uh, the average cringe, but... Hmm, yeah, okay. So don't do Harrow, uh, don't do Dragon, just go for Baron. Hmm, yes, uh, okay. DK notice, they throw in the ult, but let's see what they can do. We have good damage, we have good damage. We are pulling off, though, which is understandable. You don't want to be in that uh, pit when Lucid Ult comes around, when Showmaker throws his rockets around at you. Uh, so yeah, that's that's that. Uh, I mean... Okay, and we just go back at it again. 
I mean, Lucid is now away. They will spot it, but like, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. They notice, okay, and turn on to the dragon. So they will get their first dragon. We just traded for Baron. This is very cool what we did there. And I don't know, man. DK is like, oh, they start to Baron once. Why would they not do it just a second time after we recall? But okay, now we have Baron. That's also uh, dangerous, right? Because now maybe Guma steps up again to hit the turret and gets uh, W'd. Bro, Baron buff. Do nothing. Loose dragon. And I mean, sure. You, it's not even a positive gold. Baron power play, right? Because 1500 is the baseline. It's the baseline. The 500 gold that you get. No, the 300 gold that you get for your five players. That way around. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, great. So the Baron did absolutely nothing. It obviously gives you a bit of XP and so on and so on. But yeah, it didn't give us much of map, like much map control to speak of. We didn't get a single turret with it. Okay, so uh, next dragon comes around. This time there is no Baron that we can trade it for. And I, I, I mean, honestly, I don't think that would be a, a good call regardless. Because hey, uh, giving the enemy team uh, Mountain Drakes to sack on when we are uh, Ooga Booga Zack Zack Dive Comp is not the best thing. Uh, Carrier gets ulted here, he ults himself, but that's terrible, he has to flash away. That's ult onto Kingen by owner. I mean, maybe this is good, but they just flash away, turn onto Faker and Faker immediately dies. Now they're on top of uh, the, other, the other side of the wall and it's like, sure, we got their summoner spells. I mean, not even in Showmaker's case, he just W'd. This is just absolutely disastrous. Like, what the hell? Okay, TP comes in. They go on to carry. What? He's getting double. What the hell? Aiming just W'd him out of the wall. And. Yes! That is so huge. That is so huge. Oh my god. We are playing this out so sloppily. But uh, yeah, aiming no flash, but he still has the. Well, Seekers, Zonias, right? Showmaker has flashed seven kills and still the Zonias. So things are turning up uh, hits for, for that guy. Um, they're also stealing our blue buff. Okay, that's cringe. That's unfair. It's not okay. Uh, they are posturing for a, for a dive here. I mean, look at this. They just go, they do. And I mean, hey, look at what our guys are doing. Kara just runs into it, just dies. Okay, hey, nice. We know the enemy team is there, let's just um, do, I don't know, uh, a meet and greet and just run into them. A steal as possible and I mean if they go into the pit, I mean, there are some ways to play it. Is it Moamo or no, it's Kingen who is in our ass. Oh god, this looks horrible. Wait no, Baker gets a massive ult on one shot. Okay. What the hell was that damage? What the fuck? I mean, Carrier is absolutely giga trolling here. Like, what the fuck was that? We know they're in this corridor. Like, why do you need to stand there and, like, clear vision in their face? Oh my god. Faker gets a massive ult off, even though, like, the overall situation is a bit rough, right? Okay, they're going on to Baron. Owner comes up, but he doesn't have ult. There's... Okay, buying some time. Owner coming out of base. Guma gets ulted, gets attacked, gets just... Oh my god, King and get... No, no, he doesn't get away. And... I... I mean... What the hell? This is just fucking Bronze Warriors Deluxe, man. What the fuck are we watching? <laughs> the level of play is so poor, but like, who the fuck cares? What did Showmaker just do there? Oh my, he, he I, I don't know, did he lose his team the game there? So T1, they have gotten the soul, but uh, yeah, we're still losing things. Carrier just picks up an inner turret, where's our bot situation? They just destroy our turrets, they just take inhibitor. 
we won a fight, we, we take Dragon Soul, whatever, but we just lose 20 turrets. I mean, it's just Zix plus Baron, it's just so fucking disgusting. Uh, but it's not only that, they also have non-committal range CC, which is, yeah, the strongest form of threat I think you could have. So let's just see, what's the next highlight? Obviously it's the Baron coming up and with DK's comp that's something they value very highly. They have the split push in King and they have the turret siege of Showmaker aiming and whatever. Um, so that is obviously something that they value highly, that they want to get their hands on and that means that we need to deny that from them. On the other side, uh, yeah, Elder is also coming up just shortly. And remember, Elder is still fucking disgusting. It is like smolder for everyone. So yeah, that's that. Regardless, is there like anything that we can do that's really cool and fun? I mean, I wonder why we don't see Faker in the side lane against Kingen like at all. Uh, he's like looking to match Showmaker. Elder will guarantee Baron anyway. So yeah, I mean, you could argue, okay. Uh, honestly, DK. They could look for a swap realistically because both objectives are really fucking good for them. T1 we, we don't have the luxury to, to allow that. Um, so that's that. Uh, we uh, Guys, guys, stop, 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 stop what you're doing. Oh no, oh. Did he cleanse? No. Okay, that's Morm's old down. It's not the highest cooldown, but it is a cooldown. But look at the situation, man, it's terrible. We need wards! We need wards in the enemy jungle! Okay, flash. Useless. Absolutely useless. That was very bad. Uh, what the fuck? Uh, like, okay. At, uh, whatever. We got control. At least, like, a better angle for the for the fight or for, for whatever. Okay, uh, Kingen TPs into bot lane. I mean, he can't push for Inip, that is very cringe. So Zeus stays, uh, uh, Zeus goes back into base, I don't know. My English is just degenerating. Are we flipping it, Faker? Okay, looking for an angle. Lucid goes in, but it is Gooma that gets it! They're TPing in our base, they're TPing in our base! But, okay, Zeus, not only does he get a kill, but he also TPs in, uh, no, he flashes into you know what gets the wave and yalla yalla and that is it dk lose their minds they lose the 50 50 against the one and only guma after getting caught all game somehow he collects the elder dragon and that will be it for game number one it wasn't pretty far from it but t1 will be the one standing supreme at the end of it all after two massive steals from guma uh, but let's not forget the like tons of mispositioning. Oh my god. Uh, this game, I don't know. Um, let me think, let me think. I mean the, 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 the carrier owner situation was a bit better but this game it's a bit skewed because both played like very high range champions or high uh, obviously with their ults right. So that's that so it's a bit easier to coordinate that. Um, but overall I mean it's hard to say much because it was just so fucking messy anyway let's just clap our hands together and go into the next one t1 fighting Woo! okay boys it's time we crack open the cold one again don't drink alcohol it's not good for you drink sugar stuff instead whatever anyway zig's first pick we ban smolder on red side which is i mean this is even better than the smolder ban on blue side because uh obviously now the enemy can't first pick it and there's no answer to Smolder B1 uh, that we can pilot at this point or that we want to pilot at this point. So it's what it is. Uh, we're going for the Corky Maokai. That would be pretty cool. Yep, yep, very nice. Overall, I think uh, the idea of the draft in the last one is not actually too terrible. Uh, I think we could have executed it a, a bit better, but uh, it worked out. It's a Tristana pick here. Okay. Okay, interesting, interesting. AP jungler here, Nidalee or something. Oh, Ivern. I mean, Lucid played it a bit, but it's not Peanut, right? It's not Peanut. So it's not the best Ivern around, but it's three on three combat. Okay. 
So uh, yeah, we can go for like an AD carry pickup, right? To just match that roll. We could go for MF or something. Jack's blind. No, 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 no. Okay, so I, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, are we looking for like some uh, very strong bot lane, like some uh, Camille, Camille, Caitlyn Lux? Uh, okay, there's the MF ban, which is okay, it's okay. But that means Guma will play something different, maybe something that has a bit more mobility or range, so that he's not called out as often. But uh, yeah, actually, Guma getting caught is something that uh, didn't it also happen in the not in the last Hangwa Live series, but in the first Hangwa Live series, I feel like. Like, I, I mean, Peanut is Peanut, right? So, like, he's pretty good. But, uh, I think he caught uh, Guma also, like, lacking a couple of times, farming mid lane. So, uh, yeah, Guma and mid lane, maybe he's developing, like, his ruler arc, right? Being cr fucking insane, but then getting caught mid lane all the time. But, yeah, so Ash here being uh, banned. It just makes you question, so with Ash being in the game, why are we like blind picking our top laner um, and not picking Ash AD carry ourselves when the enemy bot lane has already been revealed? Sure, uh, like we blind top lane, we blind support. Uh, we are on red side by the way, red side being the side that has the counter pick potential. Uh, but yeah, that's just... Uh, what? I mean Poppy would have been really a good here, no? I mean you could still go Poppy support, but mm, yeah, maybe a bit better in terms of like setting up a Sivir! Sivir versus Zix, that is a s like, a, yo, when I was young and still had the will to live, that was a matchup that uh, we saw a couple of times, right, uh, in 2018, right, when uh, mages first moved into the bot lane. Then, uh, yeah, Silver was one of the options that people looked at, right, um, because she's also a utility AD carry t to some extent, right, she obviously does tons of damage, but she can just press R and help her team. Uh, with that, obviously back then we had a bruiser heavy matter, so putting bruisers uh, on rocket ships in terms of movement speed, that was pretty nice. Um, yeah, poor DK fans, today won't work out, but uh, yeah, maybe tomorrow, but they have some really nice like snacks, what was that, some cool sandwiches of something? That's something, that's something, so it is what it is. Overall, let's talk about the comms in a moment. T1 fighting, woo, let's go. Uh, yeah, so in terms of comps, it is the classic attack faker at mid lane. Uh, yeah, something that people have been uh, doing more and more recently, it feels like. So anyway, our bot lane is the classic defensive bot lane. We have Alistair headbutting our opponents away and Sivir with spell shield and just running away. Uh, yeah, this is a classic from very old days. Uh, in comparison to today. Damn, am I old. Jesus. This is like something you saw again. 2018 at times. 2015 it was really popular. Uh, yeah. Anyway, mid lane matchup. It's okay. But Tristana obviously is Tristana. We'll have to see how it works out. We are swapping away from the Zix. This is disgusting. Yeah, uh, a bit rough, but it's going to be okay, right? So it's going to farm up. What? No W? Uh, it's not W, it's E. Sorry. Uh, okay. I mean, you're level 4. There are some, like, uh, level up builds back then. Not sure if it's like, common now. Where you don't put a point in E, uh, like, until level 4 or something. But he was level 4, so you should have always had a point in E. Okay, Moam. Can we get him? It's a bit rough, but should be okay. Flash forward, but now there's Showmaker. And Guma is indeed in trouble, but he will get away at least. <gasps> oh my god, Showmaker with the old nearly getting a 2 for 1 special. Ay, 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 ay. So again, Showmaker gets ahead early, right? 
Uh, he's not ahead in CS, which is a bit weird. I feel like that matchup should be more favorable for Tristana in the early game. At least I remember seeing that. It's 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 rough. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they should probably have funneled more gold into Zix, right? They shared it at least with three people. But uh, yeah, that should be about it for the turret push. There's no way they can do anything more here. Uh, yeah, like it's going to hurt a bit, but they should be fine. He gets W'd out of the queue. Oh my god, man. This aiming guy, I mean... Jeez. What? Oh, Hex Flash. Uh, so yeah, next TP comes in. And, I mean, Sivir is... Like, I mean, she's killing minions, but turrets, that's not... That's not her... Uh, yeah, that's not her job. And yeah, this is this is rough. Obviously, like I mean, I I agree they have to go in here. Maybe owner has to be here earlier, but obviously he was uh, in bot lane. Maybe he should have like taken the direct path from dragon to here. Uh, but yeah, it's rough. Obviously, Zeus dying is better, by the way, than uh, like giving over the turret. It, obviously, the gold is like not even half. Boomer laning against Cassante is just not the same as. Uh, what we want with Zeus. It seems that we caught Moam. TP comes in. Flash? What? 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 What are you guys? Calm down, please. Like. Uh, nah, man. Brother. Six grubs, man, for these two champions. My, 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 I hope we have insurance for our turrets because we're going to lose them. Wing onto Moam, but they're Showmaker and, I mean, let's see, let's see. They're pinging the dragon. Obviously, that's something. Zeus here. <laughs> Owner's ult has already been used. Ay, 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 ay. What the hell? Like, do we have to force a play onto Moam? Sure, he doesn't have flash, but it's like, huh? Is that is that the angle? TPing in, aiming just comes in, gets the plates before 14 minutes. Photo finish, yeah, good, good call, Mister Mister Co Commentator. But uh, yeah, yeah, look at this turret diff, man. This game they played it so well, but I feel like we enabled this. So hard with handshaking a swap. I feel like we could have just played the lanes out standardly, which obviously they like they would still have looked into swaps. Absolutely they would. But I feel with uh, with the first line of swaps we already like pushed them so much, right? It finances aiming's early items. Harold, Harold, Harold. At least yeah, look at the map. Very nice. Our friends are here. But can we do something about this? Judge uh, comes through, HP low, with 6 grubs, like Corky needs, Corky? Uh, Zix needs an auto attack W and that should be it. So we're 1k behind, but considering like how many turrets we are behind, it's okay. Oh, Zix, uh, Zeus, okay, nice. So he gets the ult, he zones some people and it's okay, Ivern! Okay, that was nearly uh, a bit risky, no? Kingen in the back line, our front line is just being left on their own. They're decently tanky, at least not as, uh, I mean, tankier than the, what's his name? The Kisante owner? No, doesn't have it in him. What is Zeus doing there? Oh, what? No, that was the satchel. I thought he jumped forward. Carrier goes in as well. Hello, can we get these killed, please? Goma! That's one, okay. And Faker gets Showmaker as well. I don't care. We won the team fight. We got the dragon. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. Oh my, oh my. What a lovely fight. What a lovely fight.
no one gets like immediately one shot or something we actually get an extended fight that's what we want to see that is just beautiful carrier here that was fucking wild oh faker w ah uh, bled shut down for Cassante, so we don't care but yeah okay we're gonna have the same situation baron versus dragon uh okay moems doesn't land the hook guma and owner pull their ults and that's moem dead in the dirt okay okay kingen looking for something we have used quite a few cooldowns but we got we got a kill for it and uh i mean we are all we like ults but i don't think our comp is too old reliant right carry here on the flank faker as well uh, we are decently tanky but i don't think we can take the baron forever especially when moam respawns faker here a bit alone has to w away and it's getting scary we have tps for the mid lane turret which have to be like have to be channeled otherwise that mid lane turret is just dead okay they're not overextending for it they just they just go for dragon but that's also dragon gone so yeah i don't know it's 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 a bit iffy okay t1 just tps whatever what is what the um oh, that's just f fuck it we ball let's go okay we get the dragon we get the smite let's just see oh wait no 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 help guma okay guma go back into the fight what am i watching what did guma just do what did guma just do I mean, I, 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 I'm sorry. I pay too much attention to Guma's weird pathing and like doing there. So I, I totally missed the like main side of the fight. I just need to see it again. Okay, that's the very early play. Replay guy. Continue, continue. Okay, this is the play. So this starts okay, right? Carrier has a great angle, Zeus as well. And like, look at Guma, just why is he running all the way like there? And then, he, like, he gets some damage at least done to Showmaker, but. Huh? I think he could have done so much more for the fight. Uh, whatever. On the other side, I mean, I see Zeus got three kills, so, uh, yeah, he popped off. Carrier had a great angle, and, like, DK was, like, dragged into this fight. Their comp also. I mean, they can go forward somewhat. That's just not their like best way to play it, right? They look to like poke and harass and then like get one kill, get another, right? Play on the resets. But uh, yeah, uh, they are not a comp that loves to get uh, like forced into a fight, right? Uh, they try to follow up on Kingen who obviously had found a good play there onto Abliat. Uh, they obviously, he obviously found Guma, so that's that. But uh, they just left them vulnerable for like carrier to just pounce on them, setting it up. Owner, uh, what's his name? Zeus followed up, and I assume Faker did a good amount of damage there. Anything cool here in the inventory? So there's the Zonias for Zeus, which is obviously quite funny. But it just says, it's just so sad, man. It's like as a top. I mean, I'm currently a top lane player. I mean, I have been for the last couple of years. Um, just seeing something like this is just so sad. It's like, ha, ah, you pick jacks. Why are you not split pushing? Where's the Blade of the Rune King? Where's, like, I don't know, something else? Your uh, Hull Breaker or whatever degenerate, uh, like, split push item you want to go for. No, Sterox, Zonias. It's like, oh, I team fight. It's just like, ah, oh, bleat. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> Like obviously, like if you want to play that, then these items are correct. And that's, I guess, one of the benefits for Jax. In comparison to many, many, many of uh, the lovely top lane split push champions, that depending on what items you buy, Jax can be a team fighter or he can be a split pusher. Whereas, like, I mean, sure, you can team fight with Gwen. It, it is possible, but uh, yeah, uh, I mean... You will never be like tanky enough. You don't have any CC, so uh, yeah, going for tank items is illegal anyway. Oh, Zeus here. 
He will die for this. Um, we have to assume. Oh, yes, the Zonias does it buy enough time. He gets another Q off, flashes the hook. And Kingen does things, but he attacks Carrier. Oh, he gets a massive Q onto Guma. But that just forces him forward. And now, oh my god, Carrier gets a massive thing, but uh, it just doesn't work. Hook onto Faker. Hello, 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 hello. What the fuck is happening here? Gets another reset, goes under the turret, but he gets the kill, gets the turret as well. I am losing my fucking mind. We just lost the game out of nowhere. No! Ah, for fuck's sakes! Man, we got the fucking dragon. Why couldn't we just leave? Why couldn't we just leave? No, we have to defend Zeus. We have to go in again. We have to go uh, for that play. Man. The respawns are coming in, but just not enough. Look at this. Like, any wave clears 20 seconds off. We just entered away game number two. Oh, for fuck's sakes. We see each other in game number three. Fuck it all. Okay, so. Back in the draft. 1-1. One, one. Played, uh... Like, I mean, we pl I, I think we played game number two somewhat better than game number one. But, yeah. The classic League of Legends experience, I guess. Lose one team fight in the late game and you lose the entire game. I mean, what the fuck was that? That was, that was so typical T1 Uga Booga. Uh, banning Smolder on blue side just shows that we are so lacking as, an, as a team. And I don't know, maybe as an organization, how can something like that be a thing? Like this champion has been meta for so long and we can't play it. Uh, yeah, here we see champions being locked in. This time we prioritize uh, the Sejuani over the Misfortune, I remember, uh, from game uh, draft number one. Uh, they're going to pick the Maokai here. I don't know uh, what argument you would ever foresee for not picking Maokai. Maybe they want to uh, like have some more time to talk about the follow-up bans afterwards. They're prioritizing Kisante. Uh, sure, whatever. I uh, just... Oh, come on, and now everyone is going to be like, oh no, Silver lost, Silver bad. Oh, man. The Silver did so well that game. Oh. We literally lost because, like, Zeus, like, flanked 1v5. We got the objective and we were like, oh, let's defend Zeus. And, it, I mean, it nearly worked out. But then it's like, oh, Carrier goes in again. And not only does he go in with 0 HP and 0 potential follow-up, he also gives Tristana another reset. Ay, ay, ay. So bad. I don't know, Faker also got caught by some CC, right? I think it was Ivor and Q. Obviously, that's not legal as well. Yeah, we have some bans here coming in, which is like, yeah, I mean... I don't know, Rakan's not really a carrier champion. At least not in my mind. Um, Bart obviously has a skin for it. Very lovely. Uh, and it's a good champion against uh, somewhat what DK has elected here. And there are some synergies with what T1 has. Well, to some extent, right? Because team fight, team fight, Uga Booga. Uh, the bans for T1 side, I like them at least. Uh, but just leaves open the question, like, where's the Maokai? You knew this was like the priority pick. They were discussing Maokai or Kasante, and then we don't ban any of them. Um, I think... Like, as good as the Poppy ban is, I think that should have easily been the Maokai. Like, double tree ban and just go. Now, we just draft the same champion. And it's not the same champions, right? Uh, as game number one, this time we have the Sejuani instead of the Nocturne. And we can't pick the Bard, so we will have to go for something else. We already have some engage, so maybe we could double down with a Rel. But I don't know how good of a bot lane that is, Rel. Why Alistair? What makes you think... What makes you think, looking at the enemy team, oh yeah, we need an Alistair. Alistair versus Zix, not good. Alistair versus Corky, not great. Alistair versus Kisante, I mean, I, 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 it could work out, but most of the time he just uh, Kisantes you. So no, it doesn't work out. Like, at least it's a frontliner versus uh, Maokai ult, but even that is just ridiculous because Rel or whatever, Leona uh, could have done the same job. Leona would have been. Oh, Leona would have also been really good here. Leona or Rel uh, or Rel. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Leona a bit more, right? Sure, her like main engage is not as good as Rel. Uh, Rel's 
But uh, yeah, I just love Leona ult, Sejuani ult. These are just great. I love when my champion has an ability that just throws CC at the enemy. And uh, yeah, I'm not in immediate danger. I don't am forced to commit to the fight. Can just fish for plays with my ult or with anything. They pick up the Maokai and the... What's this name? The Blitzcrank, obviously. If we ever fall behind, this game is going to be like fucking rough. We're going to get our buttholes turned around and twisted and whatever else. Uh, they're going to stand there. We obviously have like owner faker who can try to go in, but that's just stupid because oh, Alistair is going to be our follow up. Great follow up. Uh, yeah, they're going to stand there, press Maokai old, and then they're going to hook us. And uh, if that doesn't work, I mean, they're going to just throw shit at us. So. If we ever fall behind, they are going to siege us to fucking death. Uh, show with a flank or whatever, we could like counter their siege. Uh, by the way, T1 fighting, woo. But uh, yeah, I mean, this game is... I don't know, it has so much like... Yeah. Potential for misery. Uh, let's just hope. I mean, this is more CC in bot lane. And Guma is playing, again, a champion that will just get uh, caught out again and again. Hopefully not, but that's just the reality of things. Okay, level two acquired for both parties. There's the hook, the E, not that, there's the hook. <sighs> Somehow it works out, I just don't care. There's the pulverize, pew, 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 pew. But uh, yeah, we don't get uh, the flash. Guma also relatively low, so it's not that he can like follow flash after the, I don't know, click away. So that's that. At least we uh, got a positive situation going on in bot lane, but this can turn on a dime at any fucking moment. Uh, next positive thing, no lane swap, no swapping whatsoever. So Zeus can abuse his early power, at least somewhat, right? The enemy is Cassante, so uh, yeah. Jungle, I mean, owner should have item in base, right? It's not that far behind, we have to assume. Zeus here TPs into top lane, picks up even more CS. CS lead gross, but uh, honestly, it doesn't matter too much. The, only, the the thing that matters is that like Zeus is in parity to the other players on the on the rift in terms of CS, so that he is indeed uh, what's it called ahead. Yeah. Oh my! Oh my! We take it. We take it. We take it, we take it. Uh, I'm not saying anything. Yon is just bullshit like that, like that. It's like that champion is just wild. Diving Faker here, that's interesting. Okay. He gets the ult in, he gets some. Oh! I mean, he, he dodges everything, but you can't dodge an auto attack. And uh, yeah, sadly, no one is close. Boomer also now in trouble. Will get hooked. And we'll just die. Absolutely lovely. Uh, I love it so much. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Please give me uh, five kills here, Zeus. Zeus, you need five kills. Oh, flashes into not getting anything. Flashes into losing plates top and mid. Flashes into me fucking slitting my wrists. Mm, very nice. I love this combination that Faker and his friends at T1 did. Actually, Faker is the least offensive one out of all of these. Okay, so uh, yeah, we take a look at this, right? Dragon has spawned, obviously. Uh, the dragon itself, not the most important thing, but uh, yeah, with, um, what is it? Chem tech soul out of the way. There are some options for some good souls, also some bad ones, or like one bad one, I think, with cloud soul not being that great for us. It's okay, but again, it's not the most amazing one. Okay, flash forward into doing nothing. Uh, Zeus here is running. He gets the kill, he gets some parts of the wave. Can we get a cross map? Faker is getting something. First blood turret though. Wait, first blood turret? Whatever. Ults are being used, cooldowns are being used. Now on the clapback, there's the Maokai ult, there is the hook. And yeah, very nice. Good thing that we have this Alistair champion. I mean, look at this fucking DK comp, right? They get Kisante, like the strongest tank in the top lane. They get the best jungle in the game right now. They get one of the better mid laners in this game. They get the best bot, uh, bot lane champion in the, in the game. And they get a champion that is not the best by far, but that has a good synergies uh, with some of the champions I just mentioned. And 
in general is decent versus immobile champions which we have well two so overall like how did dk get such a like good comp on red side right our b1 rumble costs us so much and then obviously i get the vision rumble sejuani yon very strong very good but it's just not as good as champions that are just favored by the meta t1 i mean we just have to hope that this big patch that uh bright games dropped onto us is really changing up the meta in a relevant way right um that i don't know caitlin lux becomes meta again oriana azir becomes meta again Lee Sin becomes meta again and whatever else and that we can just benefit of that jace becomes meta canon and uh, nar and whatever and that we can play like on a on a world's patch with a meta that is just more suiting to us but i think the changes are not big enough i mean there are a lot of changes but the changes to each individual champion are by no means big enough i feel to warrant like dropping this like sure the same strategy as we see now uh is weaker but it's it's still how it is right the, the buffs to other champions are not big enough uh with obviously jinx i think uh being a clear example of the opposite of that but obviously in terms of scaling as long as champions like smolder exist like why would you pick jinx and like have a immobile uh like item reliant slash gold reliant champion when what is owner doing why are we posturing for this i mean we use everything for lucid here which sounds not like a good thing they still have hook they still have Cassante, they still have all out Showmaker just what he want because there's no threat anymore. Zeus old, I mean, is as late as he's late to the fight. Again, it's this is just the the classic. Oh, let's use all our ults on Delight's Rakan. This is just the next part. Let's use all our cooldowns on fucking Lucid's Maokai. What the hell? Like this is a a fucking Maokai with two items. Like we're not one shotting that guy. Okay, oh wait, with the TP from Faker, and I mean, I guess we killed Lucid so they don't have Smite. Oh no, oh no, what is this? Does he have, okay, he has uh, Vomox, and Vomox is also live, so he will be full HP. But jeez, Bro is giving me a heart attacks with his like decision making. 6 TP top and we'll get that turret so we will trade top lane turret for the dragon um, but uh, how many crops do they have? 4 Zeus has ult so that's good still oh my god what the fuck riot games Jesus fucking Christ man that champion needs to get fucking gutted cut off his hands that he never may throw some bombs again oh nice 3 turrets for one and a drake i'm just fucking it's disgusting it's so disgusting this six champion is so stupid and sadly we are also kind of stupid like what what is this like the impact lucid with maokai had in this game comparatively to owner sure owner secured herald owner secured some drakes here and there but is that even worth mentioning really like two assists right from like larger skirmishes to six out of seven kill participations for uh for lucid like i like owner right i like them all i think that should be clear but carrier and owner like this game at least they're not like actually like inting but in terms of impact in comparison I mean, Moem is also not doing all too great. Maybe that's why the support gap is not looking too disastrous, but I don't know. Uh, stop it! Stop it! Three ults for Maokai! Sure, there's Baron and it's like, oh, if there's no jungler, Maokai... Still, like, huh? That doesn't matter. They can do the Baron after they fucking killed us. When we use our cooldowns on a tank Maokai that has flash and face rush and two and at least two tank items, maybe not, maybe even more. 
Vegas or Duma or Faker, that can be a fight one. What the fuck is this decision making? This is not a fucking Lee Sin or a Kindred. I mean, Kindred is, is also not the best example. This is not a squishy, carry, bruiser, whatever jungler. It's a full tank Maokai. That presses R, you can't even follow up. Nah, nah, they can't pull the trigger on Baron. They have no Baron damage whatsoever. Hook onto owner. Yeah. Nice. This is, by the way, how you do it. You just one-shot the enemy jungler like that. Owner doesn't get to press any button. He just instantly gets one shot. And uh, yeah, DK just show how to attack jungle better. I mean, just look at this. I mean, this pathing is also pretty fucking illegal, no? Like when you think about it. Uh, this is the game state that I was kind of referring to earlier. Like at the very, 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 very start. If we fall behind or whatever, like we are just getting absolutely booty blasted. We have no reliable form of engage. Oh, we just flash in. Cool. I mean, I, I don't care. I, I might look like an idiot, but I jinx T1 to win a fight. I'll take that. I'll take that. I look like a fucking stupid bonobo. If if the cost for that is T1 winning a fight and getting a Baron, I just, I, I take that. But uh, again, it's like it took three people flashing forward uh, and DK positioning upwards without lucid ult. I'll, I'll, I'll take that uh, to look like an idiot. But yeah, T1 TP's in, right? Very nice. And we get Soul Point as well. Yo, let's see it once more. So DK also kind of does the mistake of using... Co no, actually, they didn't use cooldowns on this. So yeah, Faker just Q flashes in onto Showmaker. Immediate follow-up by owner. And Zeus, yeah, ult and flashes forward as well. Got some damage. Got some good damage down, but uh, yeah. It's not smolder, so uh, like they're not deleting the waves, but it's enough damage and they can, yeah, stall it out. We have, again, no engage that is like in any semblance reliable. Sure, as much as I love owner's ult, look at this. This is just stupid. Faker gets a good ult off, so uh, yeah. DK, uh, being a bit greedy, I think they could have let the wave uh, go a bit like closer to the turret, right? I mean... The wave is not going to one-shot the turret, so they could have let it do a bit, but uh, whatever. We got a kill, that's still good for DK, right? They defend an inner turret, that's worth, I don't know how much at this point, 800, 600, 700 gold, whatever. And uh, yeah, we get a kill, show some assists as well, but uh, yeah, this is just worth it. Oh, owner? What? Wait, wait, wait! No, 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 I mean, we get the kill onto Moam, Faker... Gets a fucking goal post. I mean, Showmaker is not here, so anything here is favorable. Can we get King Gun? Okay, nice, 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 nice. I should have paid more attention. Showmaker was still in top lane. I thought he was already back. Um, so uh, yeah, but then then every then DK is just in thing. Like, why are they posturing that uh, that far up? Maybe they were bluffing, right? Because I think Showmaker cleared a wave and then was like in fog of war. And I think he was already back. And maybe like T1 thought... Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, this is what happens when DK just has like 2% of their power. Running into these champions is just so fucking scary. But uh, yeah, this standoff thing is just not good for us. I think we should play the map more. Uh, Faker doesn't have TP, so obviously that's not an option right now. But uh, I feel like that's an angle that we should play into. Kingen has itemized uh, very neutrally, right? Uh, the Kinnik Rukern, oh, okay. Uh, Kinnik Rukern, Randuins, and uh, Jack Show. So like he's Omega Tanky for both damage. Jesus, look at this damage. It's just done. Lucid will burn down. Tree down. And uh, yeah, we're pinging top lane. We're pinging top lane. If we rush it before they can set up their defensive lines, maybe we can do something. But there's the Ziggs. Let's see. Let's see. Can we get a turret once? Man, this top lane. <sighs> Finally, this top lane uh, in the turret has been our nemesis for the last couple of games. Not only this series. 
like true people who suffer with T1 will remember last series where we died and cried looking at this turret and looking at the smolder deleting baron ways again and again fuck smolder all my my brothers hate smolder ay 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 what is it actually with T1 just getting fucked by like hyperscaling AD carries like first obviously these hyper carry hyperscaling AD carries were always broken like not only against us but like their win rates and what they did the damage output I mean I think we can all agree that Zeri on release and like even years afterwards right was an absolutely disgusting champion and then right games uh yeah they had one more in them and released smolder but it just feels like we're just going to flip for elder and elder's going to decide the game so just like last game who comes in faker has to ult away but this buys so much time look at lucid lucid help help nah man that motherfucker, oh my god, that was massive old Zeus up. We can't make that joke, uh, but uh, yeah, he, uh, no, we can't make that joke either. I mean, he just unleashes hell. I think we can say that one. Uh, damn. And yeah, all this for a little bit of a dragon. Uh, yeah, they absolutely lose their minds turning onto Faker. So this is the opposite of what could have happened last game, right? Where DK, uh, gave the up the dragon and focused their attention onto Zeus but this time we weren't able uh, last time we weren't able to uh, like spank their butts while they turned their back to us this time they lose their minds looking and attacking the faker sama and uh, yeah we pounce Zeus gets an amazing ult on right it looked like we even missed our window there but big ult flashing in with the Q and I mean he turned up the heat Let's go into the next one and uh, finally we're up at match point. Let's go, let's go. Next game, next draft. We are on red side. We give over first pick Zix. Let's go. Uh, yeah, come on T1, show me something good. This is not good. Now enemy team will just lose it. Just goes for another game of Maokai, I would assume. Just. No way you pick Nidalee. If you pick Nidalee, you're delusional. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. This is absolutely... Yeah, I mean, I don't say GG, but <laughs> this looks very fucking terrible as, again. Lilia. Uh, I don't want to play Lilia against these champions. If I had to play Lilia against these champions, I don't know, man. Oh, I just cry. Oh my god. This looks, looks so rough again. Like playing into like Mahokai Zix again and again. It's like why don't we pivot into these champions for ourselves? I know owner doesn't love playing Mahokai. I get it. I mean I don't. I think Mahokai is pretty like fun to play. But uh, whatever. Come on. We're banning our top lane champions or something. I don't know. At least the draft is not that bad. I mean it's kind of bad but at least we don't have to blind pick our like lanes like too much right considering what happened i don't know was it last or the the one before no it was i think the game number two game where we blind pick top lane and whatever else support yeah as well didn't get really countered but that's that so yeah both sides banning top laners uh which i think that should benefit kingen right kisante is still open uh but as DK, I don't, I wouldn't want to ban Cassante at all. Yep, something like Leona, uh, right? That synergizes well with uh, the misfortune. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. Nautilus. Yep. Just a bit worse. Obviously, a better uh, like CC lockdown than Leona to some extent. Um, but obviously, has to go in and going into this DK comp is very fucking rough. But I can see the benefit of having the CC lockdown as well. Obviously, uh, yeah. Kingen and Muamrel. Muamrel, I mean, this game looks so fucking rough already. I I am just not feeling misfortune in the current meta anymore, right? With how much pick has, like, come out of the, I don't know, the woods. This is just not a champion that wants to live. <gasps> That's my girl! That's my Gwen! Okay. Uh, let's just hope that Zeus doesn't 
play Gwen like he played his Jax and goes for teamfighting Gwen. Because if you teamfight as Gwen versus this enemy comp, uh, you just... Nah. Um, obviously, W, Gwen is immune. Gwen is immune is very nice here. But uh, yeah, just please. We have some like defensive tools. Some, not the greatest. Uh, against this turret demolition squad. So I don't know if Gwen is the best idea here, right? Because if you group with the team, you're just worse than Cassante, right? It's easier as Cassante to be effective than as Gwen in a team fight. That's just very easy to say. Uh, and you just need more resources and setups. So that's that as well. And also we're playing Gwen into Zix. Oh my god, they're just going to swap on your ass and you're going to have no early game. And then you're going to be stuffed out of resources. Gwen is a champion that just needs gold so much. Like levels are cool, but my girl, she needs gold. Oh my, oh my. This can... I, I, I have no confidence in this game. It's like we're struggling in so many positions, it feels like. Like what is our game plan? We can, like, Our Gwen is going to be so far behind. Uh, like if DK plays out the early game correctly. Right? They can just set up for swaps and just Gwen cries. Um, we have double AP top, so I mean magic resistance is coming in anyway for DK. But at least that's something. Merc Treads value is so high. Oof, 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 oof. Okay, nice, 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 nice. At least that's something. Um, yeah. No, 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 no. No, they already lane swap. It's even worse. Oh god, it's so fucked, man. You can't play top lane carries that need gold in this matter. Luckily, at 2 minutes 50, whatever, like, we swap back, so uh, it's going to be fine. I wonder how Gwen got so much CS in this lane swap anyway. I should have paid more attention to that than Carrier and Lucid playing <laughs> Ring Around the Rosy. Regardless, regardless. Uh, it's still going to be quite tough. They can swap and they will swap again at some point, right? Once, uh, I mean, at least uh, when Grub spawn and top lane turret gets uh, squishy again. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Uh, wait. Okay, Carrier expected the backstab, so that's that. But hey, we get the flash. We get some alone time with the turret. That's fine. Oh! Go, 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 go! Faker gets the solo kill in the one versus two. Very nice. He wins the duel of makers. And uh, yeah, again, owners like la 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 la, farming, farming, farming. Cool for you. But again, uh, Lucid has two assists. Like, uh, he's at least. Again, contributing to the game, and I mean, he's about to do so much more. Yeah, I mean, Lucid goes low, but yeah, Faker can't get it. He doesn't have enough mana, right? He TP'd straight from uh, mid lane. It is good for Zeus, right? That King can move. Uh, so, honestly, in the in the grand scheme of things, it it turns out to be okay, right? They get one kill. They lose a few things. Uh, they use a few things. We get grubs. Gwen gets to push in a wave, gets two plates, cool, uh, depending on how much Tristana got. Tristana got one plate, so that's also okay. So overall, I think a gold positive play for T1, but the idea behind it, right, is still rather concerning that, uh, yeah, these dives and this like bullshit here, attacking Guma, doing the cross maps, it's just so easy for Lucid, right? Okay. They are taking Herald, but wait, owner did he, like who found who here? Uh, well, I guess with the TP coming in, Showmaker just going to get the kill, all Zeus away, and yeah, nice. So they get owner's flash, they get owner's, um, uh, they get Zeus ghost, they get owner, I can't speak, they get a kill, they get two summoner spells, great. Sure, Showmaker used two as well, but I mean, hey, they got the kill, they also pick up the Herald. Uh, it's being used immediately in mid lane. Just watch this bullshit, man. What was that aiming? Very bad. What was that, Moang? Very bad. 
uh, yeah, uh, stupid things happen again and again. But that's why this is, uh, yeah, the regionals and not the LCK finals or something like that. This is some uh, talented but um, confused boys playing the League of Legends against each other. Just for fuck's sakes, man. Maokai, OP, we give Lucid Maokai and he does just so much with it. Uh, three kill participations out of four once again, nearly going for the 100%. He picks up the dragons as well. He picks up the herald. He picks up uh, three grubs. So it's just uh, interesting, right? Uh, he gets the neutral objectives. He gets the kills. And sure, he's 30 CS behind. Um, let me ask the one who cares because I certainly don't. So this is pretty aggressive here, but we can't see the angle. So here, the Leandre's second. Um, again, a very strong build and dealing with tanks. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. You are really lacking attack speed here. Um, there, back, back, back then, there were people who uh, went lethal tempo and so on and so on to like circumvent some of the attack speed loss. But yeah. Next, uh, next turret. Yay, 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 yay. Uh, yeah. Okay, ghost. And we just run, run, run. But there's also the next one. Well, there's a TP. There's owner. He gets two sleeps, but Faker TPs in and gets immediately destroyed. There's the next TP coming in as well. And yeah, that's our Gwen dead as well. And uh, well, okay, Lucid just goes in, but oh my, well, four more. It's the classic. Uh, yeah, very great that we have a carry jungler here that uh, just really helps so much. But Faker's TP was fucking illegal, Jesus Christ. They don't get an objective from it, but uh, yeah, nice influx of gold. Sure, we had uh, we still are ahead, right? Because CS is a thing in the game. But look at this, our gold lead is not as high anymore. And oh yeah, they just solo soul point. Ah oh, man, this game is so lost. Man, I hate it here. I hate it here. No, no one is learning. No one is sentient. It's all just shit. Oh man, this Lilia Gwen is just so shit. And it's going to go so much worse, right? Because we failed our idea of having carry jungler and getting ahead or something. Because carry jungler just does less than tank jungler in in all stages of the game unless you get oh five men Lilia old. Uh yeah. So what is our counterplay to do Baron? Hmm. We have so much vision and uh oh what do we do? Hmm. Oh we just give Baron for nothing. Oh good. Uh, good thing that uh, Gwen also TP'd and uh, didn't do anything in the side lanes for the last 30 minutes. This game is so fucking lost. Again, like, uh, this time we don't give the enemy team Smolder for like six games in a row, but we give over like fucking six Maokai every game. And they also have two other comfort champions uh, with uh, Kisante and Rel. And oh, but we have the counter pick here and there. But oh, we are fucking uh, incapable of playing the fucking League of Legends game. What the fuck? Like, what is this random high priority on misfortune? Can someone tell me? Like, two months ago, I would agree. I would have agreed, right? Misfortune is the AD carry that deals the most damage. That is still, I think, a fact, right? But like, you need to be alive. You need to be in the fight. You need to uh, not be CC'd and caught to deal that damage, which is not something that you can guarantee in the current state of the League of Legends game, right? Actually, actually, Vayne does the most damage. Yeah, it's this, it's the same logic with Misfortune. It's like, mm, sure, if she gets to do her ult on five people, she does the most damage. Yeah, but that's just not something that's happening. That's the same thing. Mm, yeah, mm, Vayne does the most damage, but yeah, you're not going to be ever in a situation where uh, like you are in range of everything. So here W auto attack. Do we have any ch further chase here? Well, we use everything, all ults and everything. So after um, multiple summoner spells and three ults, um, we have 
manage to slay the Cassante in the side lane. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. T1 is going for the super mumbo jumbo motherfucking uh, play. Faker gets engaged. He at least gets the flash. Showmaker has the cleanse. But Zeus doesn't have any ult. Guma still gets the kill. There's no objective on the map, by the way. Even if we ace them five times, what do we get afterwards? I mean, there's the dragon. It has spawned while I was talking about no objectives being up. Silly me. Uh, again, if my sacrifice... Owner. Oh my god, thank god we have owner. So we get Lucid here. I, yeah, I just hate this here. Like, look, look how much stupid shit we have to do with, like, setting up, like, TP backdoor place in the bot lane uh, for like look at this we chase this guy with our AD carry and support where the enemy team has Baron buff for some reason besides like the enemy team does not choose to end the game they choose to hey let's do, let's help our top laner in this 1v3 bot lane now they push look there's the ward and boom Kara goes around with the blast cone and faker TPs and now we have uh, some semblance of uh, I don't know an encirclement uh, and yeah, we go in, Guma flashes forward to secure the kill, and then we skip forward to this. He gets a smite somehow, flashes the ult, and does Lilia things, pounce, pounce, pounces away. Yeah, attacking the Baron on spawn, Gwen with TP in side lane, and we TP in. Because of course the Gwen is going to help us with this Baron defense. I just... It is so fucking bad. It is so stupid. Like, why are we instant TPing on this one? Why aren't we trying to fucking throw Lilia balls in? Why aren't we, like, look at fishing with Guma ult? Or Faker ult, right? If we don't want to commit Guma's cooldown yet. Which obviously is higher cooldown. Like, we have so many things we could do. Before, like, we just shotgun the Gwen TP. The Gwen doesn't have TP. We are so fucked for the next five minutes if DK has any semblance of proper macro play. Which, A, surprise motherfucker, now Faker shows in bot, they start the objective again. And, oh, thank fucking god that we have Gwen at the objective right now. Look how much Zeus can do here. Wow, Zeus, don't, don't, don't kill the enemy team over the wall too hard, too fast. Oh, nice W already out. Nice! Uh, but we have the, the engage now, right? We don't have any engage afterwards as well. Hmm. I wonder why our... F it's, it's so fucked. Like, like, T1 could not draft, like, a fucking functional comp when their life depends on it. That's not correct, of course, right? Uh, but, uh, yeah. We had, like, decent drafts in this series. Just drafts that are worse than our opponents. That doesn't mean that the draft itself is bad, or the composition itself is bad. Which is different to this. I think this composition is bad. I think this draft is not good. Uh, just like, the Gwen and the, the Lilia, they hate each other. Uh, again. And, and this is just not looking even at the enemy team. Like, the enemy will get five Merc threats and they just will, yeah. Owner? Oh no, man, it's so late already. It's going to go to 5k. Yeah, I just know. Okay, we see each other in game number 5. Okay, we're in the draft of game number 5. I don't know what happened there. Maybe um, magically T1 just deep throated a shotgun and just lost everything. Uh, for some reason, DK in game number, what is it? Uh, 5. Bans the Zix themselves. So, uh, yeah, great. We first pick Ash. Great, we don't have to play Misfortune again. Uh, again, strong champion, but uh, maybe... Yeah, this, uh, the five, uh, the four games of zero wins for Corky. Let's just pick it again. Uh, I mean, it's it's still obviously a good champion. We So, focus on the positive things. We've banned the Maokai. Fucking great. Like, Jesus Christ. Oh my god, man. Okay, so Ash first pick, I think is okay. Especially when Zix is not there. 
Uh, I think Ziggs uh, versus Ash can be quite rough, especially if Maokai is not there. Like immobile champions like the Ziggs and the Misfortune, uh, like the Ash and the Misfortune, become more and more playable if these champions leave the game. So that's at least something. Lilia being B1, Lilia is obviously a champion that Lucid is good on, but it will have to see. We'll have to see. Uh, he's not on the Maokai train again to get just an S tier champion. I think again Maokai is absolutely fucking busted right now. Many people do agree with me, but yeah, for T1 it took four games for us to realize that. So the misfortune answer here against Ash is interesting. She does more damage, but obviously offers less utility. And in 2v2s it can be a bit tricky. We pick the Zyra, hopefully not support because that's just an immediate counter pick because the misfortune presses E and your plants die. So that's an interesting like premise to to go into. Uh, what is this? Look at Showmaker, look at the Akshan, look at Showmaker, look at the Akshan. Yesu! Without any knockups. I mean, they can't be, uh, Gragas. LeBlanc! Against Corky! Okay, interesting. That's a, that's a, like, glove thrown at you, Faker. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting, right? LeBlanc? Uh, Leona and uh, the uh, Lilia, so Merc Treads, Stonks. No, 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 no. No, jungle. Okay, I, I, we, we don't know. Jungle could be the Zyra. This could also be. Poppy, Poppy is okay, but I don't love it in particular. We don't have any point and click CC against the LeBlanc jumping in. So, yeah. Hmm. I, 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 I don't love it again. So, the Zyra pick into Misfortune is just... Uh, okay. Obviously, it's not support, right? But the, in larger team fights later, it's still the same issue. Also, stylistically, she stands here, she stands here. And uh, yeah, Zyra just loses to range. The enemy team comp has some range. The enemy team comp also has some Zack Zack elements to them, so that's at least something. Uh, but uh, yeah, mid lane matchup, Rough Faker will have to go into some defensive items. But for Corky, these aren't like too far from where he wants to be. Uh, but they're going to stifle his builds, his power spikes by quite a bit. And obviously, if LeBlanc gets too far ahead, we have no easy lockdown. She's just going to like one shot everyone because we are overall a rather squishy team. Um, uh, what was it again? Uh, Ash, Poppy versus Leona. Uh, what is it? Leona Misfortune. Yeah, bot lane also does not sound great. I mean, it's playable, but uh, I think when both teams are even, I think uh, we are struggling more so. Um, I mean, it's just so fucked, man. It's just so sick. We should have already won the series, but we lo we end game number two, and then game number four. It's just so hard to play, and we play it even less optimal. We don't even try to, right? Oh my god! Whenever you see like Gwen group with the team, whenever you see Gwen Gwen TP two objectives, you already know it's shit, and like. Random motherfuckers will tell you, oh no no, as top laner you need to group. Yeah, if I play Cassante, I group. But uh, if I play like split push Uga Booga champion, then uh, yeah, fuck you, I'm not grouping. At least when I also have no way to enter team fights from flanks or something, which my team can't set up because my team loses the stand up contest. Regardless, we've yapped enough. We look at this game. Top lane is losing jungle. Uh, I mean, our clear is faster. But honestly, Owner has been on a massive back foot this series. His mites have been good. That's at least something, but that's kind of about it. Uh, yeah, this Metlin matchup, it's not too bad, right? Due to the like buff Sukoki, but obviously it's a fucking like assassin, right? Uh, she's going to do what she wants to do. Kara here is being quite nasty. Uh, yeah, he's he's fine, he's fine. But uh, yeah, 
Well, then matchup, we talked about it. I think DK is favored, uh, but not by a lot. And it doesn't actually matter because people swap. Not sure why. Like, I, I don't know. D it seems like DK swapped, right? DK is the one initiating the swap from... Cool, Faker has to flash away uh, so early. This is what I want to see. Mm, uh, so like a... Mm. That's that. Again, mid lane matchup, very rough, especially with no flash. That's going to be quite something. No, 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 there's no play to be had. There's no, 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 nothing. Uh, he gets the Meganar. But actually, it's not enough. Meganar does not allow him a window to flash. I thought he just gets Meganar flashes over the wall and it's fine. Because like it's, it would be illegal for Guma to follow flash. So, yeah, crazy, crazy. Very nice. That's much needed gold to uh, set us ahead. Faker pro 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 rocks the passive, has not recalled, with just the cookies, is doing A-OK -okay there. Owner also jungling away. So, can we get uh, can we get happy here? Or is it uh, still a bit too early for some positive emotions? No, they can't chase. Even if the E connects, which nicely dodged by Faker, uh, Lucid had to invest flash and everything to get this. Can we have some damage here? Okay, nice, nice, nice. Who flashed there? Okay, owner. Okay. Another kill for Carrier, very nice, that's exactly where we want the kills to be. Um, yes, Faker already has the Null Magic Mantle, so yeah, he has the options to either go immediately into the Merc Treads, which obviously give less combat power. Ooh, and Carrier, he's... Mwah! Please, please continue to have such a good form. This game so far, it is... It's just so good, man, if he's not on fucking Alistair duty. Oh, man. Okay, okay, okay. Drake being done. So, neutral objectives continue to go into Lucid's favor. I mean, again, out jungling owner to uh, like every degree. Like, it's like sure, like owner is like uh, like me when I jungled in like season 5 or something. It's like, hey guys, uh, sure the enemy ganked 5 times and has all the neutral objectives, but hey, look at my fucking CS lead. I have like double the CS, which owner doesn't even have that. So... That's this Zeus here running in, but Carrier is around, and I mean, yeah, well, we get the flash, very nice. Faker <laughs> forces Showmaker passive, chunks him out, so that will be uh, something. Okay, okay, my friends, why are we overforcing this? Cassante does Cassante things, and Carrier ults, but he has no mana, he has no mana! Gets put to sleep, and that will be a shutdown. Why the fuck are we sticking around and overplaying this play? For like sakes, man, we already were out. We already defended the first rotation. Now we're going to lose first blood turret in bot lane. Ah! Uh, it's like, yeah, yeah, you're Poppy Cassante, but you have no mana. And you're two versus five! It's two versus five! Okay, okay, 14 minutes, Harold is available. We are 800 something gold ahead, but we are not stronger right now. We are, in fact, weaker. Um, oh, this is... Okay, it's okay, it's okay. No, it's not okay, Guma flashed. Oh shit, that's very bad. So that's two ults, a TP and a flash for just lucid ER. Okay. Lots of things going on here. Let's see. Oh no. Yeah, good thing Guma, you flashed that earlier player. Fuck sakes. One will die, Zeus will also die. It's so fucking. Oh my god. First of all, why do we fight? Sure, we're not super, super weak, but we're not strong enough. We're weaker at them. Like, you know, words. Nice! Owner also dies, because how do they have vision? Well, I guess fuck you, that's how. So, somehow aiming knew that Owner was doing this objective. Oh, actually they have a ward there. Never mind, never mind, I'm sorry. Uh, in terms of item spikes, it just doesn't matter, right? Their first item spikes and so on, they just utilize the gold right? they have right now so much well. And uh, so much well, Jesus. Uh, and also look at AD carry items. I rest my case, have a nice day and uh, yeah. So, okay, nice spacing, another Guma flash, oh god, okay, oh my, nice Zeus, but you are all alone, 
Cassante is broken, but luckily not that broken. Uh, so they get the charge of the Herald. They get Guma Flash. They get a kill. Um, not good. Not good for us. But honestly, it could have been much, much worse. Uh, T1 positioning, very, very greedy. Double sleep, but no follow up immediately. So that's that. So this is LeBlanc here. Uh, trying to catch her in the side lane is pretty wild. Very nice moving by Guma. Very nice, very nice. He still doesn't have his next item and he goes for BT second. Interesting. Interesting. Understandable, but interesting. Let's see, let's see. Everyone is rotating, but DK is first on the play. Faker getting chunked a bit. There's the poppy copter. There is Zeus. And he finds Moam. And the sleep is the sleep. He flashes forward. What? I like. Kingen lives with Meganar. Zeus will. Will he burn? Yep. All of this, by the way, all of this, all of this, because Zeus just wanted to go in again, which is not the fucking first time that one of these lovely boys thinks like, oh, hmm, maybe we can just run in again. Like the TP is obviously fine. The TP is great. Defend our team. Nice. Put on the uh, the Zyra old. And then look, we have no cooldowns anymore. Why are you going in? Especially on the fucking. Uh... <laughs> like even if Kingen dies here, it doesn't matter. We are still losing the chase down. They are like they have like thrice the movement speed we have. They always chase us down. Fuck sakes! Getting Baron early for DK's comp. It's so good for them. It will guarantee Drake. It will get them so much more gold. Like Zeus getting in the church. Who the fuck cares? It's gold on the Cassante. Like it's not that they have an like, an insane siege comp, right? Luckily that's not the case. But their comp is a like a early game snowball comp in the in a relative classical sense. Them getting kills already bad enough. Them getting Baron already bad enough. This will mean map pressure. This will mean access to uh, like wards. This will mean vision pockets for Leona and Showmaker to make picks on our immobile carries who don't have flash or at least Guma doesn't have it. Right? It doesn't have to be the biggest Baron power play. It just doesn't matter. It opens up the map. It enables them to generate more picks later. Sure, if we don't if they don't end the game or get into a like big 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 lead, it's fine for us. But they pick up a Drake, delay dragon stacking for us. What are you guys doing? If we lose a fight here, they finish. No Showmaker has two and a half items. Aiming has three items. Guma is inting. What the fuck is bro doing? Like, I don't care if it works out. I absolutely don't care. Even if he gets a pentacle in this situation. Why? What? Look at the map. No vision there. There are your teammates. No of your teammates. It's the fucking... No, we can't make that joke. Fuck. Uh, like, they can't... Uh, um, you know, right? Uh, they can't revive you. Let's just say that. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Why are you need like? Why do you need to stand there? Just stand next to your turret, or like pivot into topside so like your teammates, like you're not in vision. Your teammates can at least try to CC the LeBlanc or just block abilities or whatever. Man, this is. A I mean, it's a typical AD carry disease, right? That you. Oh, I need to. I need to be the first on the wave. We need to have mid push or some shit like that, which like matters so little. Not nothing, right? But I mean, come on, be reasonable about it. We like we are. It's just so fucking bad, man. We were in such a good situation. Just don't do stupid shit, and we do stupid shit. And look at the game now. It is so fucking hard to play. We need twenty minutes to scale up, and even then, again, it can be tricky. Right? It's not that DK's comp just gets like, oh, we're we outscaled now, we can't play. Nah, it's sadly not like that. T1 here has a lot of Baron threat. What is this TP? Hello, do we just give up or what the hell? Guma again. It's, it's just lost. It's just the game is lost again, right? 
We lose bot lane turret, we lose Ash Flash, we have no cooldowns, Zeus doesn't have TP. What what is Showmaker doing? He could just easily take turret. And what is the rest of DK doing? Okay, they want to play it safe. They want to play it safe. Uh sure. Play it safe, DK. Uh I think they could have just uh strangled our balls uh a bit harder here. T1 Absolutely desperation play. Oh, we are the better scaling comp, but oh, let's just absolutely lose our minds. Okay, Showmaker here gets CC chained, uh, but yeah, it just doesn't matter. Lul, AD carry, and so on and so on. That's, by the way, soul point uh, collected. Yeah, no hex drinker, no nothing, right? Against double AD, uh, double AP carries. Cool. Uh, yeah, we absolutely need this Gromp, by the way. Uh, this Gromp is what is going to win us the game. Um, just very great. Maybe Cassante can do Cassante things. I doubt it. Honestly, because the enemy team still, uh, yeah, just can go there and we're just going to lose. Nice, so we're playing KT next time. Uh, yeah. Guma says, like, fuck this, I don't care anymore. Cool. Nice. Um, I have the same mindset, brother. 30 seconds, yeah, we just lose. It's like, we, honestly, we can't fucking, like, play League of Legends until our lives belong to it. It's, it's, it's so fucking bad. Like, can we, like, it's, it, it's not even us, oh, we, we misplay that, or we do this. Oh, actually, no, we actually do, do something. That's the worst thing. We always, we play comps that need to chill, and then we do something stupid, overforce this, re-engage that. We lost two games in the series by having a kite back comp and re-engaging, re-engaging. Like what the fuck are we doing? What the fuck are we actually doing? It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like what the fucking hell? Like Kingen won the series after playing fucking dog shit. Moam like had one good game, still won the series, doesn't matter because wait. He didn't instantly lose his team uh, a game. <laughs> hey, happy for the DK fans, man. They had a tough fucking uh, split. Them making it to Worlds is good, but I mean, this is just fucking depressing. Faker having very bad TPs. Uh, his Yon was okay. I don't know what this high priority on Corky is. I mean, Corky is a great champion, but I mean, can we pivot into something else after like it clearly didn't work again and again and again? It's like. Sure, a champion can be good, but if it's just not working, then like maybe do something else. But uh, doing something else, like even though we are like the super creative, smart team or whatever else, because like we draft weird champions sometimes, we just don't do it. Like when it matters, it's it's always the same. It's always the same. Regular season or like some shit. Hey, we have creative comps, we have this and that, and then once playoffs hits around, what are we doing? Oh, cocky five times in a row, which loses every game. I mean, Koki still has a 0% win rate in the series. Five games, Koki loses. Uh, T1 looking at game number five. Oh, yeah, maybe we drop some Koki. It's like here, this bot lane play. It's the same thing. Why can't we be happy uh, that we defended the play earlier, right? That we defended the dive, extended the uh, bot some time or whatever. No, we got to fucking back up, uh, back it up uh, again. Go in again. Look at this. Here, TP, every, like everything great. Maybe we're like the... The setup is already questionable because why are we here? Then, oh yeah, Zeus needs to go in and his entire team just gets dragged into it. And again, at this point, it does... Like this King in living. People are... The casters probably talk about this. I don't fucking care. King in could die three times. We could get five kills from that. Like three million golds. These people would still all die because there's no way we get away from fucking three million movement speed, Lilia and Misfortune and five dash LeBlanc. And here at this point, the game is already like so screwed because the enemy team has more gold than they like should have had. And we are forced due to that into situations, and not only the gold, the map uh, situations also things like turrets are lacking, which gives DK more avenues to set up vision, to set up picks. And yeah, at some point, yeah, it's just uh, GG. It's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's just so fucking silly. Um, overall in the series, the same things as Previously, Zeus being too hyper. Good. I, I mean, everyone has good mechanics. We we uh, we didn't have any like I don't know like flashing into a wall or some stupid shit like that. We didn't have anything like that. Guma getting caught and being greedy with positioning, 
and pathing. Faker being kind of sloppy and I mean I don't know what this cocky thing is again and again and again. That's that. Owner not having any impact in any game whatsoever. Like smites don't count. It's like he gets out jungled by Peanut. Sure Peanut is a fucking goat jungler. He gets out jungled by Lucid. Like less impact in team fights and in objective control and in ganks. He just gets completely run through the map. Carrier. Clearly, I mean, he it looked better than previously. No fucking like stupid single deaths here and there. Got caught a few times, but lived, so that's good for him. But still, not having the same impact, pivoting into champions that I don't know. It's just it's just not his thing. And sure, play meta. You should be able to play meta. You you're one of the best teams. You have so much good coaching staff. You have money for good coaching staff. Uh, you have so much time and so on and so on. You should be able to do this. But okay, if you just can't play the meta, if you're not comfortable with it, then just play something else. But no, T1 just forces themselves into playing these supposed meta champions in the bot lane and it just doesn't connect with them. The misfortune looked fucking terrible. Like the Ash was okay, but in terms of gameplay, there were many things that just didn't work out well for her. Like the Sivir, I think the game was fine till we obviously just randomly got aced around the second, uh, third mountain drake. So, sloppy play, like it feels like they're not focusing on the game or just, I don't know, they're, they have something else in their hand, they're like, yeah, I, I just, I just, it's, it's, it's so bad, it's always the same, I know, with T1, it's always summer, it looks so terrible, no, spring it looks so good, then we int uh, at spring playoffs often, then MSI is okay, sometimes we win, often we just lose before finals. Summer, absolute fucking disaster. Playoffs, we, we cope, but in the end it just doesn't work out. And then at Worlds, wait, when the, what, what, what was it again? When the trees turn red or brown or whatever, and the leaves fall, then T1 just wakes up. Or whatever the, the narrative for Last Worlds was. We have to hope to even make it to Worlds, but this, I just don't fucking get it. It's like, at some points, like these are just like basic things. It's not uh, like we aren't coordinating like super complicated things correctly. It's like setting up a split push with Gwen, like I'm picking Gwen and Lilia, that's one thing. Setting up a split push, not over forcing plays. It's just like these are things that like challenger teams like practice these things. Like they talk about these things or I, I, I hope they do. Because these like fucking fundamentals that have been in the game for I think since inception, I think split push is one of the oldest strategies, we failed to set it up. Sure, split push might not be the strongest strategy right now, but if you draft for it, you have to do it. You can't just say, oh yeah, we're just grouping with our Gwen and we hope that our Gwen can do well against these five range champions and zone control champions and so on and so on. It's like, yeah, I mean, here look, look, just look at this. It's like, oh yeah, let's just go in again. Like with what? With what? Go in. Our cooldowns are aren't there like no ults no flashes our champions are weaker than the opponent's champions at this point in the game due to just how champions work how they synergize with early item gold and so on and so on so the idea to fight is bad the, we have no cooldowns to fight in either sums or some, uh, it's just, i'm repeating myself i'm just so disappointed and just so sad I, I, like last time i was angry this time i'm just sad i What's going on? We have one day to look in the mirror, feel ashamed and hopefully practice some things, talk about the issues and I hope T1 just can go back to some fundamentals. That doesn't mean that we ignore the matter, which I don't know. Owner like just go into like ranked games and play 5000 Maokai games till next time so that you can play Maokai and don't farm camps, fuck camps, just gank, help your team. Uh, do that. Guma carrier, talk with each other. What do you want to play? You're not clear, clearly these current bot lanes just aren't working. Like we're losing the game for Grom. Ah! <sighs> oh, man. God. Clearly the current like bot lane meta is just not something that they want to play. Then just don't play it. Then play what you're strong at. Uh, sure, this is like usually the underdog loser mentality, right? This is like what. 
the wildcard regions do when they go to worlds they just like they adapt to the meta they usually suck at it and they find success when they play what they are comfortable with it sucks when you have to do this because obviously you want to play the meta it's meta by definition best thing ever so that's that but just just play what you can like just go enchanter support lane bully shit if they swap away then just destroy the turret just have fun with that zeus it's in a fucking tough position right top lane carries just don't work the team doesn't want to play for split push for for, for some reason then just give him bruisers and uh yeah or like in any case like if you want to fight 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 then draft for that just go for early game aggression and uh, champions that like that to do that don't draft champions like fucking Zyra Corky, which need to scale, which want to kite back and then force fight into LeBlanc and uh, what's her name? Leona, Lilia, like all of these champions which are just online faster and like to just fuck with you. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. I hope even with this terrible T1 performance, um, yeah, I, I, I hope you enjoyed this video somewhat. Maybe I missed some things. Maybe I'm overly dramatic. Um, maybe you have some hope and copium for me. We see each other next time. Bye, my friends.